I'll call to order the Ascension Parish Council meeting for Thursday, May 16th. If everyone would please stand for the prayer and the pledge led, led by our own Ken Dawson. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, we give you glory and praise, O oh God, and we thank you for another beautiful day. But Lord, as we come, O oh God, we ask that you look upon Lynn Kenyon, O oh God, who is the wife of our POI officer, O oh God. Father, we ask that you just watch over her, heal her body, O oh God. And Father, we pray for strength and help for Lester, O oh God, as he goes through these times. Father, we pray that you watch over those, O oh God, that endure the storms, O oh God, on last evening. And Father, we pray for your protection upon this nation. And as we come, O oh God, in this meeting tonight, we pray for your wisdom, your guidance, O oh Lord. And Father, we pray, O oh God, for your direction. We ask that you bless everyone here, O oh God, and the people of this parish. And we thank you for all that you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ken. Roll call, Madam Secretary, all members present with the exception of Councilman Turner and Councilman Johnson who are working. Chair's additions, I have two. Um, first is that we'll be passing on item number eight, the property condemnation. The other is I would like to ask for um, a roll call vote on adding a Kids Cove donation item to the agenda. Don't move. Motion by Councilman Shake Snyder. Second. Second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Uh, is there any, I guess actually we do need a whole roll call. Madam mm -hmm. Secretary, if you would. Councilwoman Cazzo. Yes. Councilman Kluat. Yes. Councilman Joseph. Uh, I'm sorry, we, Councilman Joseph is not here. Councilman as well. Dempsey Lambert. Yes. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yes. Councilman Malasso. Yes. Councilman Satterley. Yes. Councilman Shake Snyder. Yes. It is unanimous. We will add it to the agenda. And in fact, I'd like to consider it now. Um, as a little bit of history, the uh, Parish Council um, had last year made a motion to donate $50,000 uh, to the Project Kids Cove. And um, we did 25000 last year, and we just haven't released the funds for this year. Motion. A motion by second. Councilman uh, Kluat, second by Councilman Lawsaw. Any uh, discussion? Yeah. Councilman Shake Snyder. Real quick, I, I, I want to just reiterate what everybody else has been saying about <clears throat> all of the volunteers. And I think what you see in this community is, is you know, Kids Cove is a prime example of what this community does. Uh, private people going out and, and uh, raising money for a very good cause. Uh, everyone else that stepped up, I want to uh, publicly say thank you. And uh, anything else that we can do to make this uh, happen and make it better, uh, we're on board. Thank everyone else for supporting. Great. One quick thing, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Also, I'd like to thank the parish president for uh, working so hard with this and also for you to put it on tonight. Uh, and let's also uh, We'll come in, Gonzalez, the city here. They need to take care of their commitment on this also. And uh, thank you. Great. Guns McClure. Yeah, uh, Chris, the, the event that uh, you invited me to attend a couple weeks ago, we just, uh, the numbers that, that came out in that event, we just don't know how many children that this is going to help and the rarity and the sparseness. Uh, you got to go a long ways to get a, uh, get another facility like this and it, it's just great and uh, I think it's a very worthy cause. Great. Councilman Lawson. Yeah and I just wanted to add uh, I, I never have a problem supporting something like this. I heard some comments over last week about uh, the public should be funding this and private private owners. Th this that group has raised more private funding than almost any other group. We, we, we do have groups that come before us and that go before the city that, that don't try to raise any money on their own. They just want handouts. And this is not one of those groups. They've, they've done a lot of fundraisers. They've worked their tail off. They've gone out there and raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, more than they, than they originally thought they would need. And, and for us to, to give a, l a little bit on the back end to make sure they can complete it, I think, is a, a great cause for for the council. Very true. They're at $750,000 is what we heard at the last uh, the event that Randy was referencing. And between this um, donation and hopefully, as Councilman Lambert says, if the city of Gonzales steps up and honors that commitment, that will put them over the top and we'll, we'll see this project done. Um, appreciate everyone's support. Is there any other comments? Any objections to that motion? Hearing none, that motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, public uh, comment sign-in. 
Uh, period reminder, if you wish to speak, now's the time uh, to come fill out a, a card and you'll have three minutes. And item number five is our parish president's report, Mr. President. Yes, I'd like to ask uh, Tamika Garrison uh, to come up. She has an event uh, that she works very hard on every year and I'd uh, like to give a little time to, uh, since she's a, a former uh, councilman for, and stepped in and volunteered, uh, we'd like to give a little time to go ahead and present her uh, festival events and uh, times and dates and everything else. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council, for allowing me to speak today. Um, I'd like to invite you and the Ascension Parish residents to attend the City of Donaldsonville's 17th Annual Juneteenth Freedom Festival. The theme this year is it's all about the children. It's going to be held in Donaldsonville on Saturday, June 8th um, from 11 to 7 p.m. in the Louisiana Square on Railroad Avenue. <coughs> Um, the City of Donaldsonville and the Festival Committee are committed to continuing the tradition started in Donaldsonville by former Mayor B.J. Francis Sr. and his wife, the late Janet Francis, in 1996 and continued throughout the years by Kathy Hambrick, who's the curator of the River Road African American Museum. Juneteenth commemorates the day when slaves in the last geographic area in America were, where slavery existed learned of their freedom. This took place on June 19, 1865 in Galveston, Texas, and later in Louisiana. It took over two and a half years for the news to travel to southwest Texas and Louisiana. Juneteenth is a landmark in history, a celebration of freedom and the end of enslavement in America. Donaldsonville's Juneteenth lineup includes a drumline competition, including and featuring Donaldsonville High School, <coughs> McKinley High School, and Tara High School. Um, we have a couple of hosts, Big Sexy and Big Sexy Junior, uh, the River Road African American Museum Dance Society, the Silhouette Dance Ensemble of New Orleans, a young band of students from yes. Donaldsonville and Baton Rouge, and the Michael Foster Project. What's special about this year is each participant, vendor, or exhibitor is asked to have a youth shadow to teach them about the business. Whether it's singing, dancing, playing an instrument, cooking, or even making snowballs, everyone has to have a youth that's going to lead their booth. So please come out and enjoy our event on Saturday, June 8th. Thank you very much, and I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. President? Thank you. Yes, I just want to remind all the citizens of the parish that uh, we're going to have two uh, Memorial Day events, one in Gonzales at the uh, Veterans Park at 11 o'clock, if you can attend, and also one in Donaldsonville at 11.45. That will be at the... Uh, the square uh, in Donaldsonville. So we need to go out and remember uh, all those uh, people that gave their lives and served uh, to make the country what it is today. So uh, I just encourage all of you and all the citizens to please try to attend those, either one or the other event. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Item number six is the consent agenda. Chair would entertain a motion. I'm nice. sorry, before we do that, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Shakespeare has Real a quick, comment. I just want to remind you, if you're on a, if you're on a diet, don't go to the Juneteenth Festival. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to lose your diet. Uh, it's, it's real good food and good entertainment, so it's uh, something that's very good to go to. We appreciate it. Councilman McClure? Yeah, well, Tommy's talking about Veterans Day. We want to, uh, we, Memorial Day. I mean, excuse me, Memorial Day. We want to remember that, uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago, a couple months ago, we had a lot of folks from from Ascension Parish uh, right here with the Louisiana National Guard in excess of 100 that shipped out and left their families and their children behind to go to go overseas. And uh, we tend to really, really embrace it and when, when it happens, but let's don't forget that they're still there. And there's a lot of organizations, if you get in touch with the Louisiana National Guard, uh, 769th Engineering Battalion or 922nd here, there's a lot of things that you can send them and, you know, or just let them know that you're still thinking about them. And remember that if your neighbor, if you know somebody, there's a lot of people at home that they, they might need their grass cut. They might need help with something, you know. And, uh, you know, we're, we're a parish of a bunch of proud people. So somebody might be out there needing something that they're not just going to ask for. So reach out and let's touch our neighbors and take care of those, those folks that are over there fighting a the battle for us to have open meetings like this in our country. Thank you. Well said. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Madam Secretary, please uh, make note that Councilman Turner has um, arrived. The Chair would entertain a motion to move the consent agenda. Move. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, second by Councilwoman Cazzo. Any objection? 
Hearing none, consent agenda is adopted. Item number seven is a re resolution providing for canvassing the returns and declaring the result of the special election held in the Parish of Ascension, State of Louisiana on May 4th, 2013 to authorize the renewal of a 1.5 mil tax on assessed valuation of all property subject to taxation in the parish for a period of 10 years for the purpose of paying cost of programs for the elderly citizens of the parish through the Council on Aging. Mr. Ryan. Yes, sir. The uh, results, Mr. Chairman, were 665 for and 383 against. That's the pro saver ball. Great. Do I still need to read that after the resolution? No. Okay. All right. Then the chair would entertain a motion on the re uh, motion. resolution. Motion by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Klua. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none. That resolution passes, and now we will move to the ordinance that that, per that resolution pertains to to actually levy the tax uh, in the future. This is the introduction of that ordinance directing a renewal, number nine, directing a renewal of the levy and collection of a special ad valorem tax of 1.5 mils on all property subject to taxation within the boundaries of the Parish of Ascension, State of Louisiana, commencing with the tax collection for the year 2014 and annually thereafter, to and including the year 2023 to provide funds to the Parish of Ascension for the purpose of paying costs of programs for elderly citizens of the parish through the Essential Can Ascension Council on Aging. Motion Vote. introduced. Motion introduced by Councilman Satterley. Second. Second by Councilman Kluwe. Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Number 10 is an ordinance introduction to revoke the existing 25-foot sideline drainage servitude in Pelican Crossing, second filing, lot 67, Martin Purview. The Planning Commission recommended approval. Move to Motion Second. introduced by Councilman Schechtsnyder, second by Councilman Kluat. Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Item 11 is an ordinance to revoke the existing 15-foot rear drainage servitude in Tommy Moore Road. Parent partition lot 1F-1-B-1, Michael E. Powers, and the Planning Commission recommended approval as well. Motion introduced. Motion introduced by second. Councilman Cazzo, second by Councilman Satterley. Any objection? ordinance is introduced. Number 12 is an ordinance to revoke the existing 40-foot private access servitude on Utopia Lane, 10-foot utility servitude, and modify 35-foot building line, Panama Manor Drive, lots 4-A-1, 4-B-1, 4-C, 4-D, 4-E, Delane Martinez Boudreau, the Planning Commission recommended approval. So, so move, move Mo to uh, introduce, I'm sorry. Motion introduced by Councilman Sexnider. Second. Second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Number 13 is an introduction of an ordinance to levy millage rates on the 2013 tax roll on all property subject to taxation by the Ascension Parish Government. Motion to introduce. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert to introduce. Second. Second by Councilman Kluwat. Any objection? <coughs> ordinance is introduced. 14 is an ordinance to amend the Ascension Parish Code of Ordinances, Chapter 8, Emergency Management, Underground Pipeline, and Utilities Damage Prevention. Second. Motion by Councilman Dempsey Lambert to introduce. Second, Second by Councilman Schechtsnyder. Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. 15 is an ordinance introduction to supplement Chapter 13 door-to-door -door sales to the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Ascension to regulate peddlers and itinerant vendors in Ascension Parish. Motion, Motion introduced. introduced. Motion introduced by Councilman Satterley, second by Councilwoman Cazzo. <laughs> Any objections? Ordinance is introduced. 16 is an introduction of an ordinance to state the Ascension Parish Council's endorsement of Methanex USA LLC's Project Boxwood 2. Motion. The project to participate in the benefits of the Louisiana Enterprise Zone Program slash Quality Jobs Program. I have a motion introduced second. by Councilman Kluot and a second by Councilman Malasa. Any objection? ordinance is introduced. Now we'll move into our public hearings uh, section. And first on 17, we have a reading of an ordinance to amend Chapter 4, Alcoholic Beverages of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Ascension to prohibit the possession and consumption of alcoholic beverages by persons under the age of 18. Mr. Parenton. To amend Chapter 4, Alcoholic Beverages of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Ascension to prohibit the possession and consumption of alcohol beverages by persons under the age of 18, whereas Section 602, enactment of the ordinance permits the parish to make and amend ordinances that it may deem necessary and proper for good government, order and protection of persons' property, and for the preservation of public health, safety, and welfare of the parish and its inhabitants. 
whereas the Parish Council of Parish of Ascension desires to amend and supplement Chapter 4 Alcoholic Beverages of the Code of Parish of Ascension, Louisiana, to prohibit the possession, consumption, or service of alcohol beverages to persons of the age of 18. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Ascension Parish Governing Authority in the Parish of Ascension State of Louisiana is as follows, Chapter 4, Section 3, Add Purpose. The Parish of Ascension does hereby declare that the abuse of alcohol is a serious problem affecting the public health of all citizens. The Parish does further declare the term that all reasonable steps should be taken to discourage and prohibit the possession and consumption of alcohol beverage by underage persons. The purpose of the section is to provide for the enforcement of the ordinance. Definitions, as used in this article, the terms following shall be used. Guardian, a person who is qualified as a guardian of an underage person by custodial mandate or pursuing testimony or customary <coughs> appointment. Relative, the, un the underage person's parent, God, God, grandparent by marriage or adoption, or someone over the age of 30 with whom the underage person has established a significant relationship of blood, adoption, or affinity. Violation, exception. It shall be illegal for any person under the age of 18 to purchase, consume, or possess either actual or constructive and alcoholic beverage. This section shall not apply to the following, a person a cons consuming or possessing alcoholic beverage in the presence of or with the permission of a guardian or relative as defined herein. An underage person, while actually engaged in the performance of employment by a person who is licensed under Title 26 of the <laughs> statute or actively engaged in the preparation of food while enrolled in the culinary arts or hotel management program at a parish vocational school or post-secondary educational institution. Violations and penalties. Whoever violates the provision of this section shall be fined not more than $500 or in prison for not more than six months or both. <coughs> in addition to the penalties provided by paragraph one of the subsection, driver's license of any person violating the provision of this section may suspend upon conviction, plea of guilty or nulla contender, <coughs> and the court shall surrender the driver's license to the Department of Public Safety and Corrections for suspension in accordance with the provisions of this section. Upon first conviction, Court may issue an order which authorizes the department to issue a restricted driver's license upon demonstration to the court that the hardship will result in unable to drive to school or work. Such restrictions shall be determined by the court. In the event any portion of this ordinance is held to be invalid or unconstitutional for any reason by any court of competent jurisdiction over it, and such portions shall be deemed separate, distinct, and independent provisions shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions of the ordinance. The ordinance shall be in full effect as printed by law. The ordinance shall have been submitted to a vote. The vote was as follows. Motion to open the public hearing. Motion to open the public Second. hearing by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second by Councilman Kluwat. Need a motion to close. Motion to close. Motion to close by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Kluwat. <coughs> I need a motion to move the ordinance. Move. Motion to move the ordinance by Councilman Dempsey Lambert and a second by Councilman Todd Lambert. For discussion, before we open it up to the floor, I'd, I'd like to ask our um, Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office officials that are here tonight if they can help relay some of the uh, challenges that they have been facing and, and um, certainly appreciate uh, their work uh, in, in teaming with us about uh, trying to address these. And uh, I know there's been some questions from some of the members of this body around, um, you know, the, how this interacts with the state law and how this really isn't um, superseding that. It's trying to uh, enhance that um, by adding an extra layer of enforcement and penalties for um, this particular age group and the reasons for, for that. Uh, Sheriff Wiley, if you would help articulate that. Thank Good you, evening. sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for your consideration on the uh, solicitation and, and Mr. Parrington's assistance on both of these issues on the uh, uh, legal counsel side. We have a, a, a situation that from time to time occurs in Ascension Parish. We're not unique in that regard, but indeed it does happen. And what happens is and oftentimes it coincides with ring day or graduation or something that is a celebration of uh, school age kids. And what it is, is homes and adults who sponsor parties and they see to it that alcohol is there for underage kids to consume uh, in the, uh, under the guard of, of, a, of a home, of a private residence, of a private property. Louisiana law provides for, it, it, there is no legal consequence for a minor to drink on private property. There is great consequence for a minor to drink on public property and on uh, 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 businesses in public places. But at a home, uh, in the wisdom of the Louisiana legislature several years ago, they protected the sanctity of the home. Now there's some argument for that, and I know that's part of maybe some of the concerns that thoughtful people may have. But I would ask you to, uh, for us to keep our eye on the ball. What this is about is not a family. It's not a family and an extended family that's having a nice celebration and the 17-year-old son or daughter is having a sip of wine or uh, half a beer in a glass. 
That's a family decision whether you agree with it or not, but that's one that I think is best left to adults and to uh, the guardians. This is about parties. This is about 15, 16, 17-year-olds. This is about school-age kids who go to parties. And this is about parents, knucklehead parents, who uh, think that uh, the best way to parent is to be a friend to your child. The best way to parent is to try to relate to a child. And the best way to be a parent is to say, I know they're going to drink anyway. This is a standard refrain. I know they're going to drink. I'm going to uh, create an environment where they're going to drink safely, and nobody can uh, then leave uh, and drive home. We get these calls. We get a lot of them, particularly now with the advent of, uh, what is it, uh, Facebook and, and, and uh, those things. Uh, a party of 30 invites ends up being 50 or 100 kids show up at a party. It ends up being the neighbors call us because they can't get into their driveway. It ends up being because of loud music. And it also ends up being, and Colonel Weber would like to share with you, several of the, these little uh, uh, anecdotes that have happened uh, that our office had to respond to that I should, that I think are compelling. And this is just a, a snapshot of a few of them that maybe would uh, make a better argument than, than uh, my articulation. Yes? We good? Yes. Could I yield to him? Thank you, yes. sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Council. There's just uh, some recently that we had to deal with. Uh, certainly one uh, this year in, in April was uh, sheriff's officer received a complaint uh, from kids drinking at a party on Manshack Acres. Uh, the homeowners actually were out of town, and a teenage child uh, held the party in which uh, all the children had left before we got there, indicating that they got on the road and drove away. It was about 10 to 15 kids that were there uh, upon our, uh, which had left before our arrival. So even if we, the kids would have been there when we arrived, uh, the, our, some of our state laws don't provide any recourse for us to, to cite or handle that situation. Uh, in 2012, in August, the Sheriff's Office received a complaint of underage drinking at a party on Brittany Street, and when deputies arrived there, they found a small group uh, with the homeowner present. Uh, the homeowner said, obviously, uh, yeah, we, they knew they were drinking, but they would not be allowed to drive. I don't know how you can control that sometime when you have a large group of kids, but that's just another situation where we were called out to and with no recourse to take uh, in that situation. In, in December of 2012, the Sheriff's Office received a complaint that uh, uh, parents picked up two extremely intoxicated teenagers from a party, one was 14 and one was 16, on Bluff Road. And deputies, when we arrived, they found signs of a large party with beer, beer still in coolers, uh, and uh, and there was adults there also uh, with many kids. And in that situation, uh, the best we could do is call other parents to come over to the house and pick up the kids or actually pick up the kids and bring them to the station and have parents come pick them up. Now, there are, you can imagine, a lot of outraged parents when we have to call them and say, come pick up your child who's uh, under the influence. And the, one of their first questions always says, well, what, are you, what did you do about the party? What did you do about the adults allowing the party? And they are sometimes as shocked as we are that we have no recourse in those situations. And uh, 2011, in January, the Sheriff's Office received a complaint from a 15-year-old that with possible alcohol poisoning in the Magnolia Estates, and deputies had to meet the parents at the emergency room where the 15-year-old was unconscious and vomiting, and later uh, we found another 15-year-old that supplied uh, the bottle of alcohol, which they both drank. Uh, the, li the liquor was taken from a, a liquor cabinet. The homeowners were not home uh, in this situation. And again, this is a, this is a uh, you know under the private residence uh, clause that no one could be charged in this case at all. And there's many more. Lieutenant uh, Joey Mayus back there, he worked one when he was still patrolling where there was 32 kids uh, that we had to uh, deal with underage drinkers at a party at a residence and when you just take those kids and obviously we're not going to allow them to drive and get them all to the station and spend hours and hours and hours contacting parents to come here to uh, pick up their kids and, uh, and obviously again you can imagine the outrage there uh, when we can't when we tell them that we can't charge anyone for for these uh, for these situations so this ordinance is, is, is really a, a, I think a great ordinance and will certainly increase and allow us to uh, uh, strengthen some of the the laws that we think that we need to help us enforce uh, these type of actions. So thank you. Let, let me uh, reinforce what Colonel Weber said. What this is not is, is asking you to reach into a person's home and, and, and through the long arm of the sheriff's office and regulate things like family get-togethers. This is for parties that kids have 
that parents often sanction and parents often facilitate the uh, possession and consumption of alcohol. It would make the under, the under 17 criminally liable for possession. It would make the person over 18 criminally liable uh, as a uh, contributing to the delinquency of a minor. We're in an impotent situation when we respond to these now. There is no, it is frankly because of the uh, Louisiana legislature and the existing law, a private residence is now a sanctuary. It is now a protected zone. It wouldn't be a drug-free zone, it would be an alcohol-full zone. It's a, it's a safe zone where a consumption and possession can happen and there's no legal consequence to it. I'll invite questions or comment. Councilman Cazzo. So this does uh, offer a repercussion for irresponsible adults. Yes, it is, and, and, and some consequence for irresponsible ki kids as well. Because mm -hmm. uh, we, I mean, I would hope that that's part of the, the message that, that adults should send to them. And certainly the target, frankly, and I've said keep our eye on the ball, is the adult who is sanctioning, hosting, and, in, and, and many times is facilitating. And I understood you to say that the repercussion would be contributing to the delinquency yes, of juvenile. Mm -hmm. Councilman Satterley. Yeah, I'm a little um, confused, Jeff. First of all, thanks for coming. I, I assume since you're supporting this vigorously, that I'm, I'm, you have to speak up, please. Um, 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 thank I'm, you. I apologize. I assume since you are supporting this vigorously, that it, maybe this came from you originally. Um, yes, sir. An, an action to okay, and thank you for that. Um, several of the cases were in District Four from the Prairieville area. It's sort of embarrassing. So it leaves leaves me to really really think about it. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know I, why I we would be drinking like more in the north part of the parish. It was probably sure. everywhere. I'm sure it was a lot more. I think it's coincidental, yes. But sir. you spoke about 50 to 100 kids at a ring and prom party, and um, certainly some of these kids would be impaired, and then they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. So now when they leave, they're no longer in a private area. They're in a public area where lots mm -hmm. of laws can control them. Mm -hmm. They can cause accidents, and they can um, hurt themselves, <coughs> hurt other uh, citizens that aren't you know, involved in a party or anything like that. So this mantra of you know, children... And I, and I use the word children in quotes. I'm sure I'm probably offending some of our 14, 15, 16-year-olds, whatever, 17 years old, that at least drinking under adult supervision is occurring just, to me, doesn't hold water. I mean, because it, where's the adult when you leave that party? And if you have 50 to 100, you can't take them all home. Right. Certainly some of them are going to be driving their own vehicles if they have either their learner's permit or, or whatever. Or I don't know, maybe they may be going off on a bicycle and get hit on the road, or, or whatever they're going to be doing to leave there. So I'm going to support this tonight, and um, I thank, thank you, you for, bringing it, for bringing it forward. And, and one thing that happens, Doc, and the the, the, the psychology of this uh, is that a a well-intended quote-unquote adult guardian might want to have ten of of their son's friends over to celebrate a school event. Typical model. Well, you don't do that anymore with Facebook because 50 people show up and then the parents don't know what to do and then you've got that situation. Each and every time that we respond to these, it's not every week, but I can tell you it's occasionally every year. That means that the scenario that, that Colonel Weber talked about, the 32 kids, that means we had to bring them all down to the station because, yes, sir, we, could, we certainly couldn't let them go home. And that meant that for the next X hours, I've got deputies who could be patrolling on the road uh, calling parents in and making sure parents get them. We have parents saying, who the heck allowed this to happen? Why are you not doing something about them? And we're, you know, faced with the uh, dilemma uh, and, and the point that we're here today. Thank you for your, for your support and your words. Thank okay, you. Councilman Melosso. Uh And I just wanted to, in case, because everybody's not sitting in front of it like we are, in case they missed it while I was being read, uh, just to reiterate, the sheriff's not just standing there saying, well, this is not about reaching into your home and, and not really backing it up with words. Mm -hmm. There's exceptions in here that says it does not apply to just a, a family sitting around that has a 17 year old right. with his parents drinking and so it, it's not we're not just saying that it that's not what we're trying yes, to sir. do it's actually covered it's in the in the ordinance itself in yes sir correct councilman turner and to follow up on what brian's saying so would this be a felony or a misdemeanor and will it be available for expungement just in case somebody is arrested for it and convicted of it misdemeanor and yes uh, 
Sheriff Wiley made a comment about knucklehead parents, and it just it, it triggered something in my head. Free to use it. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a, right. Well, right. I, I just That's a better word. <laughs> Well, I don't think any of us are naive enough to think that this is going to stop the issue, but I think it, the fact that, you know, it, and we know that, you know, parish government, um, police force, et cetera, you know, it can't be the nanny state, you know, and it's, it's not going to stop everything. But if by doing this tonight we give the sheriff's office one more tool in their toolkit that they can, you know, help uh, enforce this, maybe a few examples, it might make um, parents um, think twice and might give teenagers some pause uh, as well. So, Councilman Clue. I'll add. Last year we had one of these. Are you going to share that one, Randy? That the Santa Monica Park yes. issue. Yes. I yield. But, but uh, Sheriff, I've been knowing you a long time. I come from a big family. We've had some huge get gatherings. Okay. I know I've Mr. Weber, yeah. Chief <laughs> Detective Hannah. Matter of fact, when Same. I was a kid, I was at some of those. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I mean, nothing against. You know, I'm. I, I passed those days, but I can tell you this. As far back as 12 years ago, I had a party for my daughter at the house, and I had security there, Central Parish Sheriff's Office, and uh, I happened to know one of them personally at that time. But anyway, and I don't know where all these people came from, okay? And and you just got to run them off, you know, and get rid of them, and and the craziness that goes with it, okay. And I'm not talking about a prom party, a ring party, anything like that. But I want to share what we were going to fix and talk about because this actually happened a couple times within the last year. I think one was in the city limits of Gonzales, yes, sir. that somebody rented either a public building or a private building, and this is a parent, a grown adult with children, that are that are teenage age, okay that didn't have the good sense, rented a place, and actually charged admission, mm -hmm. had no security, no other parental guidance, and actually at times during it, left it, left the event with a pile of 50 kids or whatever, drinking and partying. I don't know if the parent went to go get some more alcohol. I don't know what, how, what happened, okay? But that's just totally ridiculous. And that's sometimes why we got to reach out to the extent of the law to, to better help you guys protect the public. And that is your motto, to protect and serve. And, and I, I just can't even um, uh, imagine that. But that's the degree of what's happening in our society today. And it goes back to what you said. They want to be a friend with the, with the child, okay, and, and, and just go along with what's going on today. It, uh, that event at the Santa Mar Park, uh, that, that's that's crazy. Well, we have them all over, but those those models, the scenarios you share, were in public places, and the people were arrested. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to build on your point, uh, Mr. Chairman, about the fact that that uh, uh, some some teeth, a little bite in this, because we, the, the the media was very good to expose, and we made sure they exposed the lady that was arrested, hosting this party, and we got a great deal of feedback from the uh, general public about that. So yeah, I don't, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, that this is going to be something we'll have to use much. I, I think it's uh, the presence of it and maybe the application once or twice should be enough. <coughs> okay. Councilman Sarley. Um, yeah, Jeff, I, I have a, I've just read the whole ordinance again after Mr. Parenton read it to be sure. The, the process here is what I'm, I want to know about now in, uh, in practice. So let's say the sheriff's office gets a call about a noise complaint. They, they're playing loud music, and you come there. How, how do you actually determine the individuals there are, are drinking and they're underage and it's not apparent? Do you, are you going to ask, and do you have a right to enter the premises? Uh, is an adult, please bring them to the door? Or how, how is that going to happen? Well, yes, we have a right. To be, when there's a, like in your scenario with noise ordinance, we're going to go there and we're going to knock on the door and we're going to find out who is there and, and, um, and address the noise issue. Clearly, in, in any situation where a deputy or a police officer arrives at a scene, they're taking mental notes as they arrive and as they approach. Right. You could look in, let's say, and you see kids drinking, but you still just can't go into the house. But if they can't produce an adult at the door, will this ordinance allow you to go in there? Or, or how, how are you no, actually going to no, catch it, them? No, it's not going to uh, enable us to uh, have uh, constitutional uh, rights that are, that, you know, uh, that are protected. Uh, if, if we have to, you know, we, we have avenues, legal avenues, if, if, if uh, we can't get into the house. Uh, frankly, but that's usually not the case. Usually it's uh, in a carport. Usually it's in, in, in a yard. Uh, 
it usually it's obvious. Usually there's a keg of beer. Usually there's stacks of, uh, of uh, cases of beer. Usually there's 30, 40 cars out there. Uh, it, in the event that we would go into a situation where, let's say the doors are locked and they won't let us in, we're going to get in one way or the other legally, all right, if the noise is uh, such or, or it's obvious that there's uh, minors in violation. We, we, we know how to do that. We know how to do it under the guise of the law. We're not going to kick a door in uh, for that kind of thing uh, we, uh, unless uh, we have authority yeah. to do so. Jeff, I wasn't implying that at all. Oh, I, know you weren't. Yes, <laughs> I was just wondering how, how we'd actually we like reduce this to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other discussion? I have one more question. Council yes, McKenzie. How does does the you, the revocation of a driver's license tie in? Well, actually, uh, I, I yield to some of my, the, the smart people that <laughs> helped me run this department. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Mr. Hanna. Yes, sir. That would be uh, going through parrot through juvenile court with Judge Marilyn Lambert. She would be the one to to uh, rule the driver's license be pulled. Even if this person was not driving while they were consuming yes, because alcohol. It, it, coincides with the the parish ordinance that is in, will hopefully be enacted that the uh, driver's license is to be excuse me is to be pulled yes okay. appreciate that thank you but if I could add, uh, Ms. Caswell, and I think a lot of situations like that, in, in, in lieu of a fine, which we know that usually some parents will pay the fine, mm -hmm. it kind of shows the kids some responsibility, and it I'm doesn't sure. uh, allow you to take that driver's license away. But it also has an exception in there to get a hardship sure. so that that person can go back and forth to school or to work. So it's, it's just one, two that the parish judge could use. And I think that would be more of a deterrent to a teen not to want to yes, lose their driver's license. Absolutely. absolutely. I, I applaud your creativity. Yes. Well, it's hitting where they live. Mm -hmm. It's a consequence that will, that will uh, probably hurt them the most. And it's not unique to the parameters or the latitude that a juvenile court judge has. Okay. They do these things all the time that are not driving related, but they may suspend or, or uh, alter their driving privileges because they know it, it's sort of a painful alternative. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Councilman Turner. Just a quick question. Yes. I'm sorry. As far as applying the law and obtaining a conviction, have we ran this by the AG's office or any of the local judges to see would this law be, will it be something they can enforce? Yes, sir. We have been in consultation with the DA's office. We've been in consultation with the parish court judge. Yes. And in both cases, I think that they are in uh, support <coughs> clearly of the concept, and I think they're in support of the language. Yes. Okay, I guess to follow um, the last question, so it should hold up on appeal if someone appeals it, they're convicted? Well, uh, Counselor, uh, what, uh, I, in a word, I would say yes. All right, but time will tell. You know, yeah. you know how lawyers can be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Have you found a loophole in it, Councilman Turner? Councilman Clark. Yeah, Sheriff. I, uh, he answered part of my question: Is did yeah. we pass it in front of the right. courts? Because yes, you know, I know, I know one yeah. thing that we tried to help you guys out with a couple years ago, and then it, it ended up in in the court, and it was shot down by the local court, and. Uh, so. And, and, and in fairness to, to decisions that were made by the courts, uh, there, th this, this fills a gap that Louisiana statute had created. And, and the wisdom of the legislature with this whole uh, 1821 issue, it, they just did it in global thing that ended up being a sanctuary for everybody under the age of 18 also on private property. I don't want to be labored. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank okay. you, any, sir. any objections from the floor on the ordinance? I have a motion and a second. And hearing no objections, that ordinance is adopted. Thank you, <coughs> Sheriff Wiley and your team. All right. Num number 20 is an ordinance to declare surplus and authorize the sale and or transfer of miscellaneous movable equipment. Boom tractor, spray tractor, and backhoe, Mr. Barrington. To declare surplus and authorize the sale and or transfer of miscellaneous movable equipment, whereas the parish of Ascension owns one 6610 boom tractor bearing serial number 355289M and one spray tractor bearing serial number BEO4366 and one backhoe bearing serial number 31008337 that are surplus equipment and no longer needed by the parish. Whereas be it ordained the Ascension Parish Council as the governing authority in and for the Parish of Ascension does hereby authorize the sale, conveyance, and transfer of all right title and interest of one sixty one, I mean sixty six ten, 
boom tractor bearing serial number 3552898M and one spray tractor bearing serial number BE034366 and one backhoe bearing serial number 3100837 at auction as is without warranty of any kind. If any, event, any portion of this ordinance is held invalid or unconstitutional for any reason by any court of competent jurisdiction, such portion shall be deemed separate, distinct, and independent, and shall affect the validity of the remaining portions of the ordinance. Motion to open public hearing. A motion to open public hearing second. by Councilman Lawson. Second by Councilman Satterley. Motion. motion to close by Councilman Shek Signer. Second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Motion to move the ordinance. I have a motion second. to move the ordinance by Councilman Cluat and a second by Councilman Lawson. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is adopted. 23 is an ordinance to accept donation and transfer title pursuant to a cooperative endeavor agreement of certain movable property owned by Galvez Lake Volunteer Fire Department to Ascension Parish Government and Fire Protection District Number 1. Mr. Barrington. Chris, uh, to accept the donation and transfer title uh, pursuant to a cooperative endeavor agreement to a certain movable property owned by Galvez Lake Volunteer Fire Department to Ascension Parish Government and Fire, District, fire District Protection no. Excuse me. Fire Protection District 1. Whereas the Gavis Lake Volunteer Fire Department owns a 1999 uh, Ford, Rescue <coughs> Ford Rescue 50 bearing VIN number 1FDWF36F2XEA98057. The vehicle is no longer needed by the Galvez Lake fire Volunteer Fire Department. Whereas the Central Parish Government Fire Protection District number 1 will maintain and provide insurance for said vehicle. Be it ordained that the Ascension Parish Council as a governing authority for, in and for the Parish of Ascension with the permission and consent of, and request of the Galvez Lake Fire Department does hereby and authorize the acceptance, conveyance, and transfer of all rights, title, and interest to one 1999 Ford Rescue 50 bearing VIN number 1FDWF36F2XEA98057 as is without warranty of any kind and more fully contained in the cooperative endeavor agreement attached here to and made a part of as exhibit 1. Be it further ordained that uh, Tommy Martin, as parish president, is authorized to execute and, ex and execute any and all documents necessary to transfer on behalf of the Central Parish Council. Motion, Motion to open the public hearing. hearing. Motion to open the public hearing by Councilman Satterley, <laughs> second by Councilman Malonsaw. Motion, Motion to close. close. Motion to close by the same two gentlemen. And I have a motion to move the ordinance by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Second. Second by Councilwoman Cazzo. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is adopted. Number six is executive session settlement of a claim Energy of Louisiana and Cox Communications. Madam Secretary, or I'll need a uh, motion roll to move call. executive session. Motion to move an executive session by Councilman Lawson, second by Councilman Cluot, and a roll call, please. Councilwoman Cazzo. Yes. Councilman Cluot. Yes. Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Yes. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yes. Councilman Malanson. Yes. Councilman Satterley. Yes. Councilman Shake Snyder. Yes. Councilman Turner. Yes. We will be in executive session. Motion to reconvene. Second. Motion to reconvene by Councilman Cluat. Second by Councilman Lawson. Any objection? We're reconvened. I need a motion on the executive I, session. I, I would move that uh, we would we would settle the issue provided uh, our uh, legal investigate state law and uh, if if it is proven that uh, that they followed the clearance for state law, we uh, we settle. And if not, then we, uh, we we do not settle. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Sheck Snyder and a second by Councilman Satterley. Any objection? That motion passes. Motion adjourned. Motion adjourned by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Cluat. We are adjourned.